This is the audio log of Medical Supervisor Peter Raleigh, dated October 29th, 2145. We have exhausted all known forms of drug treatment in hopes of finding a way to abate this strange outbreak of dementia, and I have yet to receive any additional data from the psychiatrists back on Earth. Options are quickly dwindling. Approximately 80% of all extraplanar participants exhibit signs of mild neuroses within the first 48 hours after returning from their expeditions. Within 72 hours, 75% of patients exhibit extreme signs of paranoid delusion and violence. We have isolated these cases in hopes of finding the pathogen. As yet, we can find no biological contaminants that would lead to such drastic changes in cognitive processing. It seems that whatever this pathogen is, it attacks higher brain functions and only leaves more basal functions in the lower brain stem. We've witnessed that a high percentage of subjects lose ability for rational thought and communication skills, and then the physical changes become evident. Subjects in this group appear to atrophy. Skin pales, muscles become slack, bone, teeth and fingernails become almost translucent, veiny sinews of their former selves. I have never seen anything like this in my career. Our observations continue. This is the audio log of medical. This is the audio log of medical supervisor Peter Rowley, dated November 1st, 2145. Patient 0432, a private Steve Jensen, UAC Dark Knight Armored Corps Division, expired today at 1543 of a self inflicted gunshot wound. This is approximately 110 hours after his return from expeditionary missions. Private Jensen was suffering from paranoid delusions and full blown dementia. Treatment was unsuccessful. He was the last surviving member of his outfit. Four other squad mates, who also came back with Private Jensen, expired from injuries suffered on that last mission shortly after their return. Before his death, Private Jensen was heard screaming in both English and other languages, something about demon hordes feasting on our souls. The other language was later discovered to be Aramaic. Due to security concerns in the area, I have secured some armaments within my office. Security clearance. I'll unlock some doors for you. There. We don't have a lot of time. Please hurry. Decontamination process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice time. Decontamination process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day. Don't have much time. Get that plasma inducer, quickly! Decontamination process started. 
decontamination complete. Have a nice day. Jensen of the AC Division. Initial psychiatric interview suggested only mild psychosis with speech, motor activity, and thought processes within normal range. Paranoia being the only psychotic element directly evident. Reference interview G8A.
systems deactivated. As requested, the following is my initial feedback on my first trip through the portal. Private First Class Frank Cinder, dated October 15th, 2145. I, uh, I don't know exactly where to begin. Obviously, I survived the first trip and feel no worse for the wear. I, I'm not feeling any of the symptoms reported by the others who have gone in before me, but I'm at a point where I'm still trying to process everything. Thankfully, the place looks deserted and devoid of any life, but, uh, the flames and heat and stench of the place. It smells of death, decay, and burnt flesh. Tomorrow we're going back in with some of the eggheads, um, science division, to start securing forward positions and we expect to start sending out the mapping droids at the same time. I feel I must admit on a personal note that I, I've, I've got a really, really bad feeling about this. I don't understand what we're doing there or, or what we hope to prove. PFC Cinders, signing off.
Decontamination process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day. Systems activated. Teleportation is made T minus
Ha! You surprised me. I'm glad to see you. I would have hoped they would have sent more than just one guy, though. I've been studying one of the specimens we brought back to see if there's something physiological that would be a weakness, a way to stop them. I found nothing so far. Haven't had enough time. I'm gonna stay here and keep looking. It's the only thing I can do. There are combat supplies in the storage cabinet in the next room. The code is 624. I hope you can use it. I'm gonna stay here and keep working. I'll upload my findings into the database. Look, I can't go with you. This is too important for me to leave. Stasis chambers. This facility was constructed to house and study the extra dimensional beings, which were recovered during some of the first teleporter tests originating from Delta Level 3. While little is known about their native environment, the specimens appear to be carbon based life forms with extremely high heat tolerances. The epidermal tissue is extremely resilient to abrasion or incision, which has complicated internal studies. Observational studies have shown incredible strength and agility, as well as the ability for some specimens to manifest and control cohesive plasma masses. The method by which these plasma masses are created is It is believed that the specimens possess a rudimentary
What you see before you is a relic codenamed U1, or simply Soul Q. It was discovered in 2104, located in a geographic region where UAC researchers have unearthed evidence of a long lost civilization. We know nothing of this civilization. According to what we've been able to decode from stone tablets, found. I have a Soul Cube in hell, and you will never find it. deciphering the symbols adorning you are. What we do know is that the thermographic readings are constant, unwavering temperature of 98.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Our research continues, and we hope that with continued investment and research, we can, one day soon, learn to exploit the technology that make up you are. This is the audio log of Research Director Larry Bullman, October 19th, 2145. I've been examining the glyphs on the cube-shaped artifact, which some are calling the Soul Cube, and combined with previous research data, it is my conclusion the device is some sort of weapon. Uh, if the power fluctuations would stop long enough for me to get the linguistic CPU online, then I am sure my theory would be verified. You know, I'll take this opportunity to lodge in another complaint about the continual power problems. Living in this godforsaken base is bad enough without having to watch the lights flicker constantly. It's just... Well, never mind. Back to the task at hand. What I've deciphered so far is a bit, I must say, disturbing. It seems that when one has possession of the artifact, if one inflicts damage or possibly kills another being, it extracts power from that event somehow. Now, once a certain threshold has been reached, the artifact has the ability to kill anything you attack with it. How you attack with it, I'm frankly not certain, indicating that the artifact is autonomous in some way. To date, I've only deciphered about, mm, two-thirds, give or take, of the markings, but my initial glance at the rest of them indicates it harbors some far greater power. As you know, at this time we have not seen any reaction from the cube, and it has withstood any scanning, abrasion, or other test beyond picking it up and examining it. I suspect that just like the civilization that constructed it, its capabilities are diminished to the point of being useful only as a paperweight. <laughs> 